okay guys so welcome back again so in this video we'll be setting up a sudo user with the root privileges and later on in the video we'll be seeing that how do we disable root ssh access to our ssh client on our server and then we'll be removing our default user that is created when we created this top droplet that is called send to us and it is generated by default so we'll be deleting that user as well and then we'll be also seeing that the user which we are going to create that is a sudo user how do we add the authorized keys to that user so that's what we are going to do in this video so now firstly what i'm going to do i'm inside my local machine here and if i do who am i so we'll see that the username of this local machine is killer the name of the user who uses this machine so it is called killer and it is for a reason that i am showing you this thing here that is why i am showing you the username of my local machine so just remember that that this is called killer and the same username i would be using to create a pseudo user on my remote machine so now let me clear out the console and now let me simply ssh into my uh, this thing here that is my uh, the, my remote server by doing ssh root at my IP address and now let me press enter and uh, now we are inside the terminal of our remote machine as we can see here so firstly to add the user what we can do we can simply use this command that is called add user and then we need to provide in the name of the user and this time I'm going to provide in killer and remember that this was the same name which was on my local machine as well though it doesn't matter that which username you pick but still uh, adding a user with the same username as your local machine gives you a, a little bit of advantage and that's what I will show you later on in the video that is why I chose the same username here so let me add this user here that is add user and space and then killer so now let me press enter and now the user has been created so now we want to add this user to a group called wheel and the wheel group is present inside sent to us and it has sudo access so what i'll do i'll simply modify this user to be added to this group called wheel so i'll say user mod hyphen ag that is add to group and then the group name and then the username that is killer in my case and now the user has been added to this group called wheel and this wheel group is always present inside sent to us and has sudo access so now what i'll do i'll simply edit the sudoers file so that this user should have passwordless sudo access by default we need to provide in a password whenever we want to use the sudo command but in our case we want to have the passwordless sudo here so what i'll do i'll show you something that is firstly i'll show you this file here that is cat hc sudoers and we see here that these are values are present inside the sudoers file so if i search here let me search here uh, okay i did cat here so let me uh, or, or let me simply search here that is what i wanted to show here that is here we can see that uh, we have this line here that is starts with wheel and we have this thing here and this thing here but what this line means is that that all the users that are present inside the wheel group does have the sudo access but they do not have the sudo access without the password to include the wheel group to have passwordless sudo what we need to do we need to comment out this line and we need to comment uh, comment of this line that is we want to include this line and not this line but it is currently vice versa so instead of providing the passwordless sudo access to all the users that are present in wheel group what we can do we can particularly define a file or we can particularly create a file for this particular user that is called killer to have passwordless sudo access so for that what i'm going to do i'm simply going to copy this line here uh, let me copy it by pressing ctrl c and now what i'll do i'll create a new file inside the sudoers.d directory because that is included here so if i do cd hc and now let me do ls here we see that here we have a sudoers.d directory also so let's simply cd into this directory that is sudoers.d so cd sudoers.d and if we ls here we see that we already have one file here that is called 90 cloud init users and the use uh, so let's have a look at the contents of this file because we already see that we might already have a sudo user here so we can see cat 90 cloud init users and we see that this file was automatically created when we installed the os that is sent to us and it has a user called sent to us with passwordless sudo access but later on in the video we'll be deleting, deleting this uh, user here that is called sent to us because currently if i want to log into my terminal or to my remote machine i can use this user that is sent to us at my ip address and then i can log into my remote machine 
but this is the same thing which we want to do for our killer user so what we can do we can create a file here using vi sudo and not vi or vim so it is for a reason that it is uh, been created with vi sudo so vi sudo killer like this and you can give this file any name i am simply calling it killer now let me press enter and now let me simply paste in the things here which i copied here so and here instead of wheel what i provide want to provide here i simply want to provide here killer and not wheel simply like this and now let me simply press escape and colon wq to write and quit and now what to, what can, what i can do i can simply validate my sodoverse file so for that what i can use do i can use a command here called ovi sudo hyphen c hyphen f uh, so uh, let me do it so vi sudo uh, let me uh, go up one directory so cd dot dot so vi sudo hyphen cf and then the name of the file that is called hc forward slash sudoers like this so if i do this we see that we are getting these things as okay that is sudoers file is passed and it is okay 90 cloud end user is passed and it is okay and this killer file which we just created is also parsed and it is okay which means that we doesn't uh, we did not uh, did anything inside killer which is not supposed to be there and it, it is a valid file here so now what we know that this killer user has passwordless sudo access but there is one thing more here to do that is though we have this killer user here and we can switch to that user by doing su since we are at uh, we are logged in as a root user so i can directly do su that is switch user to killer and we see that we are logged in as the killer user and if we go to his home directory we see that uh, we can print out the home directory by doing pwd and we are in the home directory of this killer user but to make ssh login using this killer user what we need to have we need to have a dot ssh directory and then inside that directory we need to have an authorized keys files which would contain the public ssh key which was already done for the root user by default but here for this killer user that directory does not exist so let me clear out the console and even if i do ls minus e we see that this user does not have a dot ssh directory so firstly let me create direct directory that is called make the dot ssh and now if we do ls minus la we see that this directory is created that is called .ssh but the permissions for this directory is 7, 7 and 5 and how do I know that this is 775 because this is the user permissions this is the group permission and this is for rest of the world basically r is 4, w is 2, x is 1 so 4, 2, 1 makes 7 4 2 1 makes 7 so 7 7 and 4 0 1 makes 5 that is 4 0 1 is 5 so we can see that the permission of this directory is 7 7 5 but we want to modify the permissions to only have read write access and execute to only the current user for only the current user so we can we need to provide in the permissions as 700 that is this directory can only be read by the current user and no one else in the group and none of the users in the world so to do that what we can do we can simply issue a command here that is called chmod 700 and then dot ssh that is the name of the directory so if we do this and if we do ls minus la again so we see that we have 7 that is 4 2 1 is 7 and then 0 and 0 for each and every one else so now what we need to do we need to create a file called authorized keys in this folder that is dot ssh so let me create a file here that is touch dot ssh and the file name would be authorized underscore keys like this and now if we do clear out the screen let me first clear out the screen and let me see it into the dot ssh directory and now if we do ls hyphen la we see that this authorized keys file that we created has a permission of 664 but instead we only want to make this file uh, read and writable by the current user that is the killer user so we need to change the permissions of this file from 664 to 600 that is 600 so let me do the same thing here that is chmod 600 authorized keys like this and now if i do ls minus la then uh, this file is only restricted 
to this current user that is called killer here because killer only has the read and write access access to it and even he cannot execute it so this is more restrictive here that is 600 and now inside this authorized keys file i wanted to copy the public ssh key that was present on my local machine so let me open another terminal here and this is my local machine here that is this is my local machines terminal and here let me simply ssh into my this thing here that is my local machine thing and if we do ls here we know that we use this public uh, private key and this public key so we need to have this public key inside that authorized keys file that we just created so now let me simply grab the contents of this public file by doing cat youtube tutorial dot pub and then pb copy to copy inside the clipboard and now let's go back to our terminal of the remote machine and now let me edit this file that is called authorized keys using vi so vi authorized keys like this and now let me do go inside the insert mode by pressing i and now let me paste in the public key and now let me press escape and colon wq so now if we have a look at the contents of this authorized keys file we see that we have this public key present here so now everything is set up for this uh, user so what we can do let me exit out from this user and be back as the root user so we know that now we are as the root user back so now let me open another terminal here or let me go to this terminal itself that we just used here and let me clear out the console and now if i want to ssh into my remote machine as the killer user uh, let, uh, let let it be like this and now to log in as the killer user what i'll do instead of root i'll simply write killer here and then the ip address here so if i do this then most likely i should be logged in and we can see that we are now logged in as the killer user here and let's check if passwordless sudo is present here so for that what i am trying to do i am try, I'll, I'll try to switch to the root user by doing sudo su that is sudo su and if this user has passwordless sudo access then i would be simply switched back as the root user so if i do press enter we see that we are pre uh, present here as the root user so it means that passwordless sudo is working so now let me simply exit out and let me be as the killer user only so this is how we set up the user for this thing here and the thing which i told you that is why i simply chose the same name as uh, this uh, as the name on my local machine because if i do here who am i we see that i am killer this is on my remote machine and now let me exit out and now i am on my local machine and if i do who am i i am also killer so previously as we saw that we use ssh killer at the rate of ip address so what i can do i can simply copy the ip address here and i can simply type in ssh in the ip address and by default uh, let me clear out the console first once again so what i can do i can simply ssh in the ip address and now what it will do it will simply use the username that is the current user on my local machine as the user on my remote machine so instead of typing ssh killer at this uh, ip address i can simply do ssh and this ip address and it will log me and and it will log me in as the killer user as we can see here so that was the reason of choosing the same username on my local machine as well as the remote machine and now let's go back to our root user that is logged in as the root user or uh, let me uh, simply exit out of this root user because from now onwards what I, whatever i'll be doing i'll be doing as the killer user and whenever i want it to be as root then i can simply switch the user but there is one thing that is i also want to delete one user here that is called send to us because we do not want that user to be present so what i can do i can simply pass this command here as the root user that is user del and then r to delete the home directory of that user also because if i do this thing here that is cd home and if i do ls here we see that we have two directories here one for the killer user and one for the send to s root user so we also want to delete this directory so what i can do i can simply delete the user as well as his home directory by passing this command that is user del hyphen r and then the username that is sent to s and now this user is deleted that is called send to s and if i do ls now we see that that send to s directory is also deleted from the home folder here and now let me clear out the screen and now let me exit out of this terminal and now whatever i am going to do i am going to do as my uh, killer user so let me log in back again 
as the killer user and now what i wanted to do i wanted to disable root login on my ssh and we do not want to have password authentication also for ssh though we do not have a password here but still i completely want to disable password authentication on my ssh client running on my remote machine so what i need to do i need to firstly switch back as the root user so i'll do sudo su now i'm root so let me clear out the console and now what i'll do lcd into this directory dot is cd forward slash hc and now let me go into this directory that is called ssh and now if i do ls here we see that we here we have a couple of files here and now what we need to do we need to edit this file here that is sht config so what i'll do i'll simply open this file inside vim so or nvi because uh, or maybe i have installed vim so i can inst uh, use vim here so vim ssh d config like this and here let me search for this password authentication i want to specify it as no so let me simply do it like this that is pass i'm searching here so password authentication so we see that by default it is set to no so it is okay for us if it is password authentication yes line was uncommented here then you need to comment that out or you need to simply set password authentication to no here so make sure that this password authentication should be no and there is one more thing which we need to disable here that is permit root login because uh, let me open another terminal here and let me exit out and let me be on my local machine because if i do ssh root at this ip address we see that we are able to be logged in as the root user but we want to disable this root login here so let's go back here and now here what i'll do i'll simply search for permit uh, root uh, it is like this root login so pattern not found why is it so so permit 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 or it may be n or uh, where is it i don't know maybe somewhere here so here it is so permit root, root login is currently set to yes but we want to set it to no so what i'll do i'll simply go to my insert mode and now i'll simply change this yes to no like this and now i'll press escape and colon wq to write and quit and now we know that we have disabled root login but if we go back to our terminal here we see that we are logged in as the root user so let me exit out and let me try it again and this time again we see that we are able to be logged in as the root user but for this thing that is the changes which we made in the sht config file we need to validate the changes and then we need to reload the sht service so to validate the shd file what we can do we can simply issue this command that is called shd hyphen t to validate the ssd config so we see that nothing is printed out it means that the configuration file is fine though you can uh, pass in some other values instead of no then it might not be right and you might be getting some error here so this command simply validates this ssd config file so this is done here and this file is right and now what i'll do i'll simply do system ctl uh, reload shd simply like this and now the service is reloaded and now let's go back to this terminal and now currently we are logged in as root and if i exit out from here and now if i try to log in back again as a root user we might not be able to do so because root password uh, root uh, root access is disabled inside our ssh configuration so we see that we are getting this message here that is permission denied so it means that our root ssh access is disabled and we can only log in as the killer user and then if if we ever wanted to be root then we can simply use the sudo su command to switch to the root user and then execute any commands which we like so guys, that's all about this video. So see you in the next one.